back out to the garden now mm -hmm. uh, or your front porch because planters are a really nice way to celebrate the season. These ones I find are very imaginative. Mm -hmm. If you go out there and buy a planter like this, though, they can be a bit pricey, so you can make your own. Yeah, 100%. You know what? And even to make these themselves, you're going to get up into price because yeah. the larger the pot, the more the plants in the more the price. So a lot but of this came so from good. Sheridan Nurseries. They always have a great selection when it comes to fall. And I did a couple different takes. So first off, I really like the simplicity of this. And this is Me more too. for that modern home. And that modern home that you want a thriller filler spiller. That's yeah. what I always say. So here's your thriller, which is the ornamental grass. Your filler, which are the flowering cabbage. And then as a spiller in the front is the helichrysum. Very mm. simple, just three different plants, but mass planted. So we have three different types of plants. Uh, a little bit of word of warning for the ornamental cabbages later on in the season. As we go through that frost thaw cycle, these yeah. things, when they start to rot, stinks like crap. Oh. <laughs> They're one of my favorite things to use. Yeah. My wife absolutely hates the smell later on. So you're going to have to remove those fairly quickly okay. after the frost. So they do look good in the winter. Right. But if you go through those frost thaw cycles when it gets warm. Stinky boo. Woo rotten cabbage. Yeah. That's basically what it smells like. What about that grass? How is that grass going to look, you know, in week four and week five? Oh, this, will, this will look really good. It'll go um, to more of a, a little bit more yellow of a tinge. Yeah. If it's underneath an area that's not going to get a snow load, it'll be totally fine. Perennial that can be then torn out of this and then planted directly in your garden. So you can get more play out of it. Okay. A lot of the times like this, I like to plant it directly in the pot in the planter so then I can just shift the pot right out, yeah. pop it right in the ground at the end. Perfect. Next year, if I want to use it again, I pop it out and put it back over. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. That really is great. Easy. We do that with a lot of plants. Sometimes some plants will grow at different rates, so I always yeah. leave a space and I'll just sh uh, sit one right in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this one here is, is a little bit of a mixture of traditional as well as a little bit of modern. Yeah, it's transitional. It's transitional. And this one here, you have an ornamental grass in the center, and this mm -hmm. is more the rust foliage that we have. Then we have, this is witch hazel. So this is corkscrew hazel that you could just cut right out of your garden. Maybe one died last year because lots did die because it was such a severe winter. Yeah. But you can put those stems in. Then you can see you have a collection of different colors. So it's not monochromatic per se, but you have a beautiful sedum. You have coral bells and this right here, when you get the purple coral bells, that's rosy glow. Beautiful, beautiful color. So nice. Working with foliage, using some ornamental peppers here too to celebrate the harvest season. Erica, some twig um, balls. These yep. twig balls could be used again in the winter. Mm -hmm. Nice trailer too. So you got your thriller, you got your fillers, you have your spillers. That is gorgeous. Okay, yeah. these are the neighborhood squirrels, raccoons. Oh, you know what? Because they, they, have are, a good lunch? they are, they uh, are. This one here is an ornamental pepper, but a very hot pepper. It's hot. Uh, okay. Squirrels generally don't like hot, spicy food. Right. <laughs> unless they've been going to maybe the local burrito bar. Yeah. But generally, they uh, they stay away okay. from this. And really, a lot of these are squirrel proof. Squirrels are basically hired by garden centers. We send them out to kill off all your and eat your plants so we can sell more later it's on. It's working. It's, it's working. Yeah, they're all employees, by the way. Yeah, they dig They dig out my plants, the plants that we have on the front porch. They just dig them right out. Pelletized chicken manure. It's by Aki Soil. Put yeah. that on there. That'll prevent those squirrels. They hate the smell. And you don't smell the chicken manure? Okay, because so I'm like, dry, I hate that smell too. Yeah, chicken poop. <laughs> It's a dry pelletized chicken manure. Put that right on the top. Yeah. You'll be amazed at how the squirrels stay away. Oh, well, thank you. I've tried I'm it on try city that. squirrels. Yeah. And I've tried it on country squirrels because I think they both are different. Yes, they are. Because city ones have attitudes. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it works on both. Come right up to you. Yeah. This is more traditional. So there's your traditional urn mm -hmm. that a lot of people will have. So it could be in black. This one here, of course, is in just the stone. Yeah. Uh, ornamental cabbages to celebrate almost a little bit of that harvest feel. Yeah. Think about the fall that you're working with fall colors, but think about the harvest. Uh, once again, if they rot out, they will stink. Um, <laughs> these here are just some florist picks. I put a bunch of collections of picks that are right there. Yeah, these are nice. I love these. You can just see how they so add awesome. a little bit of color, a little bit of height, a little bit of drama. Yeah. So remember, no more than three colors at any time. A thrill, a fill, a spill. Celebrate the season and look for plants that can take a little bit of frost too. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. you want it to last. Yeah, Frankie, you got thank it. you.